welcome y'all. Today's lesson is going to be on adding and subtracting decimals. So let's jump right in. Hey everybody, welcome to adding and subtracting decimals on the T6 math course with me, Brian. So let's jump right into what we're going to work on today. So our goals for this lesson is that we'll be able to add and subtract decimals with differing place values. So let's dive into what that's going to look like. First piece of vocabulary are, is the word decimals. So those re represent numbers and amounts that are between whole numbers. So if we looked at it like a number line and we had the number four here and the number five over here, any one of these inside represents a decimal value. Same thing with fractions, but if we were over here, that could be four and 34 hundredths. Here might be four and 83 hundredths. Again, all of these represent amounts between whole numbers. Our first key point, and this is one that is going to be very specific for just addition and subtraction. So remember, this is just adding and subtracting. Don't take this with you when you multiply or divide as there are different rules. But our first rule is we're going to line up their numbers by their place values. So if we have 4 and 62 hundredths, I'm going to write 15 and 8 tenths. So before I add them, I make sure I line up the decimal point. That's just a good check to make sure they're aligned. And we'll talk about this again, but it's making sure that all our place values are lined up. So all the tens are in this place, all the ones are here, tenths, hundredths, all the way there. Lining up the decimal points, make sure that your decimal points, that all your place values are lined up. If there is no decimal point, it goes to the right of the number in the ones place. So this number right here is a whole number. How do we know it's a whole? Because there is no decimal piece. But once we have that, it goes here. This is the tens place, the ones place, which leads us to our decimal point to go to the right of the ones place. This is going to be helpful if you have whole numbers or when you do have whole numbers in your problems. You can add a zero to the end of a number to the right of the decimal without changing the value of the number. So 46 and 8 tenths can also be written as 46 and 80 hundredths, can also be written as 46 and 800 thousandths. We could continue forever. It does not change the value. They can be also cut off because they do not hold any value, but sometimes we do add them on to make addition and subtraction a little bit easier for us. Four, if there is an empty spot in a place value, you may add a zero. So what that means is if we look at our place values, our decimal points lined up, we can see that right here above the three, there's a blank space. I can add a zero here without changing the value. Do you have to do this? No, but oftentimes with subtraction, we make mistakes, we forget there's a zero, and we bring down the number below to the bottom of our answer. So make sure that if it helps you to put a zero in there, do it, and then you would add or subtract like normal. That zero, again, does not change the value of the number. When you add or subtract, you're just going to do it as if they were whole numbers. So if we took the problem from before, zero minus three, we can't do it. So we borrow from the eight, make it a seven. This zero becomes a 10. 10 minus three is seven. 7 minus 9, I can't do it. Borrow from the 6, make that a 5. The 7 turns to a 17. 17 minus 9 is 8. I'm going to bring down my decimal point straight down. 5 minus 7, I can't do it. Borrow from the 4, make it a 3. Add 10, make it 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. 3 minus 1 is 2. So our final answer would be 28 and 87 hundredths. Again, if you have an issue with reading decimals, there is a whole lesson on decimals and place value that you can check out to make sure that you're naming these correctly as it will be important later on. Six, do not forget to bring down the decimal point in your answer. We just talked about this before, but I guarantee it is one of the biggest common mistakes. You see the decimal point in your problem. It does not matter if you solve the whole thing and bring it down 
If you bring it down in the beginning or if you bring it down when you get to it, the most important part is that you bring it down. Otherwise, your answer is going to be maybe 10, 100, 1,000 times larger than you really intended. So the decimal point has to find its way back in. So why do we do this? Decimals provide us more accuracy than just using whole numbers. So knowing how to combine decimals using addition and subtraction will be essential in using anything from money, medication amounts, or small incremental changes in something. So imagine, same idea, if it was how tall you were. You're not just four feet or five feet. You can be somewhere in the middle between those two. So to increase accuracy, we do have this here. So let's go over some sample questions, questions are, that you're going to see on the T's exam. So let's go into those right away. Jess bought a, so we have our sample question number one. Jess bought a birthday present for her friend, which cost $56.78. She spent an additional $92.43 on herself. How much did she spend in all? So again, even though we have a word problem to start, we can still break it down like we normally think. So we have birthday present for a friend, which we know cost $56.78. In addition to that, what it says is that she spent an additional, so let's get this box here, let's move it over a little bit, good, an additional $92.43 on herself, and we're looking for how much she spent in all. So we're missing our total right here. So we can easily take our numbers. So let's just shift all of this stuff over. Not duplicate it, but if we shift everything over just a little bit, good. So we have our space here. So we're gonna take $56.78, making sure I line up my decimal point. So I can put 43 on this side, 92 on this side. Now what I just showed you is also a really good method for if you're unsure how to where to start. You can start with the decimal point, line up everything to the right and to the left. And I'm just going to add like normal. 8 plus 3 is 11. Drop the 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8. Plus 4 is 12. Drop the 2, carry the 1. Notice I did bring down the decimal point as I worked through, just so I didn't forget. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 2 is 9, 5 plus 9 is 14. Since 5 plus 9 is in the, in the front, we do not have to carry anything over. We can just write 14. So we know that she spent $149.21. Some problems do require some context, so just make sure you do understand what that amount or what that number represents. In this case, it is dollars. All right, let's look at sample question number two and that beautiful chunky handwriting that's right there. So again, we notice that there's three spots after the decimal here, one spot after the decimal here, which means that you are going to have to spend extra attention to make sure your decimals are lined up. So I'm just going to rewrite my first number. And this is where you might want to do the decimal point. To the right is a five. To the left is a 23. Now, personally, I do like to add in extra zeros. It just helps me not even pay attention to anything. It just makes addition a lot easier. I don't have to think about it. Really great when we get to subtraction. So nine plus zero is nine. Seven plus zero is seven. Six plus five is 11. Drop the one, carry the one. One plus five is six. Plus three is nine. And four plus two is six. So right here, we do have our answer of 69 and 179 thousandths. All right, sample question number three, we do have three numbers here. If you notice, they also have three different amounts underneath. So instead of being confusing, we make sure that we might have to add some placeholders in here. So I'm gonna take my first number, 34 and 8 tenths. Now you've also been told that sometimes addition, you like to put the larger number on top. Honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as everything is lined up. So three and 492 thousandths. Again, I start with the decimal point, five, six, and here is the four. I check, everything is lined up. I know that it's all addition. 
Honestly, that's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is mistaking an addition for a subtraction sign, subtraction for addition. So just make sure that you have the right sign down. So I'm going to add in some placeholder zeros just to make sure everything looks aligned. If it helps you to draw lines to see the alignment, that's also great too. Great strategy. So let me solve. 0 plus 2 plus 0, 2. 9 plus 6 is 15. Drop the 5, carry the 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 4 is 13. Plus 5 is 18. I'm going to put down my decimal and remember to carry the 1. Don't worry, I did not forget that. Don't you either. And let's add these together. So 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. Plus 4 is 12. Drop the 2, carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So my answer then is 42 and 852 thousandths. Sample question four, we have 83 plus 18 and 327 thousandths. Here we do notice that we do have a whole number here. So just make sure when you do your whole number, we do put our decimal point at the end. That's why we went over that to make sure you know where that decimal point goes if it's not there in the number itself. Again, decimal point, let's do 18. And then we have 327 thousandths. I'm going to double check my sign, which in this case is addition. And I'm going to put in my placeholder zeros. So now I can just add straight. So 0 plus 7 is 7. 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. Decimal point. 3 plus 8 is 11. Drop the 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 1 is 10. So my final answer would be 101 and 327 thousandths. Sample question five. Notice we have skipped two subtractions. So if it helps you sometimes when you're working through these problems to highlight the subtraction sign in a different way to make sure you know it's subtraction, by all means, please do that. Like I said earlier, the biggest mistake is always people are going to mistake addition or subtraction or mix them up. And it would be a shame to do all the good work and not get it right. So you notice here it was a little bit easier because they both had two numbers after the decimal, so lining up would have happened naturally anyway. That's why I didn't really make it as big of a deal, but you can check they are aligned. So now we just subtract like normal. 3 minus 4, can't do it. Turn the 8 into a 7, the 3 into a 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. 7 minus two, 5 is 2. Bring down my decimal point, 7 minus 3 is 4, 6 minus 2 is also 4. So we have 44 and 29 thousandths. All right, sample question 6. Again, here we see a differing amount of place values. So we have 45 and 1 tenth minus 23 and 56 hundredths. Now, if we line them up, 45 and 1 tenth, 23 and 56 hundredths, we double check that it's subtraction. Here is why placeholders are really important. The number one mistake people are going to make is they're going to put a 6 directly down here. Do not get caught in that because we don't do that. Why? Because there's actually that placeholder 0 up here. So you're really subtracting that 6 from 0. 0 minus 6, we cannot do it. So I borrow from the 1, make it a 0. The 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. Notice how that number is different than what we would have put had we not put a placeholder above. 0 minus 5, I can't do it. This 5 becomes a 4. This 0 becomes a 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. Bring down your decimal point. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. So in this case, our answer is 21 and 54 hundredths. Remember, if you ever are unsure, you can always add to check. I know we didn't go over this in other ones, but... This one is why it gets a little weird. So we can add what we got plus what we subtracted. And it should equal what we had in the beginning. So we see 45 and 10 hundredths, 45 and 1 tenth, same value. We talked about that in the key points. This 0 doesn't hold any value, so it does not have to show all right, question seven. We have another one here. Again, we see that there are differing place values on the top. So let's see how this might be a little different. So we have 87 and 38 hundredths minus 45 and 9 tenths. However you need to line them up, totally fine. We double check it is subtraction. So we make sure we have that. 
And as always, I like to put in the placeholder zeros. It just makes it so much easier. Now we can subtract. 8 minus 0 is 8. Because the 8 was on top this time, and we were subtracting nothing right here, that's why we could bring down that 8 if we didn't use the placeholder. We can't bring it down if it's in the second position. 3 minus 9, we can't do it, so we borrow from the 7, make it a 6. 3 turns into a 13. 13 minus 9 is 4. Bring down your decimal. 6 minus 5 is 1. 8 minus 4 is 4. So our answer is 41 and 48 hundredths. And our final sample question. Tom has a budget of $500 to purchase new supplies for his staff. If he has spent $121.45 so far, how much does he have left to spend? So let's see. Let's take our first sentence. Tom has a budget of $500 to purchase new supplies for his staff. One of the important things to note is that when we do this, we do know that the $500 is going to be the total amount. This is the total, and we know it's $500. And we know with the budget, you're not going to get more than that, so that must be the amount in total that's there. So we also can see that if he has spent $121.45 so far, we know that amount came out of the $500. And now we are looking for what is left. So in order to do that, we know that to find this piece, that it must be a subtraction problem. So we're going to take 500. And I'm going to put the decimal point here to make sure mine are lined up. 121, 121, and 45 hundredths. In this case, it is money. So excuse me, it is $121.45. And we are going to subtract. Again, putting in our placeholder zeros just to make sure we have the number there. So let's get to the subtraction. We start with 0 minus 5. We can't do it, and we know we're full of zeros. So we're going to cross out the 5, make it a 4. That makes this 0 into a 10, and now we can borrow from that one. So that 10 becomes a 9, and our 1's place is now 10. Now our 1's place becomes a 9, so we can give our tenths place 10. We still can't do 0 minus 5, so we cross out the 10, make it a 9, and make this hundredths place a 10. So now we can subtract. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. Decimal point. 9 minus 1 is 8. 9 minus 2 is 7. 4 minus 1 is 3. I'm going to include my dollar sign in front, so Tom has $378.55 left. That becomes our final answer. All right, y'all, it is your time to go forth to try these out on your own. Remember, line up your decimal points. That is the best key to make sure you get the right answer. Add in placeholder zeros, secondly, and three, add and subtract exactly as you would normally. You got this, and I cannot wait to work with you again. Good luck. Y'all, that was wild, but congratulations on crushing another lesson here at Nurse Hub. You should be proud, and then continue working to make sure you fully understand everything that you just watched. Remember, practice is the only thing that we need to make ourselves better at all of these topics. Good luck, and I hope to see you soon.